and in glory, I will see his face, and there I will serve my King forever in the holy place. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and living your Spirit Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to 1072-1072. In Christ alone, my hope is found. Want to go? In Christ alone, my hope is found. Is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, stand to the fierce trap on as down. What high of love, what death of speed, when fierce I see. When striving sees my comforter, my all in all, yeah, in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, hold to on flesh, fullness of God in heart, blessed be. Peace of love and righteousness come to be from he came to save. Be on thy cross as Jesus died. The right of God was satisfied for every sin. On his was placed, here in the death of Christ I live. There is no crown, his body lay, like of the ones at that message. There was a thought in your youth's bed. All from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since cross has lost his grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. No fear in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life first cry to final death. Jesus, the man, my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of mine can ever flow from his hand. Spirit returns, or cost me home. Yes, the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. He returns or cost me hope. 
Yea, in the power of Christ I stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. We thank you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. 1151, amazing grace. Amazing grace. One to go. Amazing grace, how sweet a sound. I say, a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. His grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears. Really, how precious did the grace appear. We are a first belief. My tears are gone, I'll be set free. My God, my Savior. As the sun me, and like a flood, his message rays on ending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, this was my hope. Seek yours, if we my share and portion be as long as life and yours. My chest are gone, I'll be set free, my God, my Savior. As I'm sunny, and like a flood, his message reads, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I'll be set free, my God, my Savior. As ransom me, and like a flood, his message reads, unending love, amazing grace. The air shall soon dissolve like stone, the sun. For the to shine, but God who calls me here below will be forever mine. My tears are gone, I'll be set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His message rests on ending love, amazing grace. Amen. Let us sing one, two, five, nine. Blessed, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Want to go? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing I never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun starts up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to 
sing your songs again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Blessed all oh, oh, my soul, oh, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing I never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. You are rich in love and you are slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness are wicked for singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Blessed, oh, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing I never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name. And on the day when my strength is failing, the end of me and my problem has gone. my soul with in your praise on ending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore, forevermore. Blessed to my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing I never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name yes i worship your holy name father lord jesus we worship your holy name today oh lord we bless you father we thank you for everything we thank you jesus for you are the lord that have preserved us up to this very moment my lord my god we thank you we thank you we thank you for your work we thank you father lord god holy spirit for you have catapulted us to the month of victory you have brought us into the month of our blessing we have brought us into the month of divine restoration father we thank you we thank you we thank you we bless you father we worship your only lord we thank you jesus we thank you holy spirit my lord my god we bless your only lord we thank you over our life, over our children, over our brothers and sisters, even those that are listening to us right now, no matter where you are, God is with you, my brothers and my sister. He is the one that has protected us, protected us all through, and he will continue to protect us. Father, we thank you this hour. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for there is no one like you, Lord. You are the God that allowed that bone to grow out from the, from the womb. Father Lord Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for those that are sick. We also thank you, O Lord, Father Lord, Holy Spirit, for those that are passing right now. We thank you, Jesus, for your marvelous work in our life. We bless your Holy Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Take count on and take adoration. Even this land that we are right now, Jesus, we thank you. We bless you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Today, my brothers and my sister, we are going to complete the series of the topic that we have been treating before we started it before Easter, but because of other programs that we haven't, we haven't been able to complete it. 
So today we are going to the part three of uh, where will you spend eternity. So uh, first of all, let us go refresh our mind towards uh, where we have read before. Let's see uh, Hebrew chapter 20, sorry, Hebrew chapter nine, verse 27. It said, as it is appointed unto men wants to die, but after that, after this judgment, as it's appointed unto man or unto men, wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Hallelujah. Once we died, where are we going? And what is going to be the next step is judgment. When the trumpet will sound, how are we going to face our God? What are we going to tell him? Or what is the record that he has for us, for me and you? After that, there's no more repentance. Now, my brothers and my sisters, we are still breathing. I am still talking. Yes. You are still seeing me. You are still hearing me. And every one of you, you, the life is still there with you. That is why you are able to hear me this hour. After this very season, when the lights switch off, where will you spend your eternity? Praise God. Where will you spend your eternity? There is two places that is made for people of disobedience, the children of disobedience. One, the first place for, for children of disobedience is air, air fire. The people, the children that obey God, go with his rule, obey his commandment. The place that is made for them is heaven. Praise God. I pray today that you will be a partaker of that heavenly race. As you have started it, you will end up with, I mean, in heaven in Jesus' name. We will not go to hellfire in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are, let us now go to, that is how we started the, the chapter or the topic. Now we are in part three. We are going to where we you spend your eternity, part three. Jesus described the reality of punishment. Jesus make us to understand how the sin is going to be on that very day. How it's going to be, he said, there is no shortcut or rather there is no, it's not a seasonal uh, event. It's going to be everlasting in both sides. And I, those in the left or also in the right side, in the right hand of, uh, of, of, of life, that is hair fire and heaven. Praise God. So the description and the way it is, he said, is going to be everlasting. No more going back to another place. You can't transit again. Now we are on transit, but you cannot transit again to another place. People that are made for hellfire, they are going to be there forever and ever. People that are made for heaven, they are going to be there forever and ever. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Let us read Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Matthew 5, 22. If you see Reverend Kayuri for us, just one verse. Okay, I've seen it here. Matthew 5, 22 says, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, 
shall be in danger of the judgment. Hallelujah. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the castle. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of her fire. Hallelujah. What is the Bible trying to tell us? We are not, to, we are not supposed to raise abuse or use words that we are not supposed to use against our brothers and sisters. Is the brother here is not only for your siblings. It's made for those that are in the Lord or made for every human being. Praise God. So he said, whosoever that shall say, I mean, whosoever that shall say uh, to his brother, thou fool, shall be in danger of her fire. Praise God. Before God, before God gave us the, the, the law, he first of all loved us because he doesn't want us to end up in a place that we are not supposed to be. That is why when he created Adam, he provided everything. He loved us. That is why he sent, Jesus Christ came down to come and die for me and for yourself. Jesus Christ did not come to die for only one person. He came to die for the whole world, every human being that is in the, in the world. But for those that recognize him, the price that he paid, for those that recognize him and those that did not recognize him, there will be some kind of separation on that very last day. Praise God. He did not deprive anybody not to make their own choice. He gave us the will. He gave us the permission to make our God. But as Joshua said, that is why, I mean, that is what I'm also saying to us today. He said, as for me and my household, Joshua, for, Joshua 24, verse 15. He said, as for me as, and my household, we will serve the Lord. And when you are serving the Lord, my brother, my sister, you have to obey, you have to follow his footsteps. Though the grace is abound, the grace is upon us. But that does not mean that we should abuse the grace of God in our life. Hallelujah. Let us also go to, he say, unquenchable fire, Mark 9, verse 43. The fire is unquenchable. You can just imagine as you are cooking in your house, and that you are using gas or you are using electric, you put, if you try to put your hand on it just to test it, if it's on or so, you see the type of heat that will come out there, we will quickly remove our hand. But that of hair fire is even more stronger than that. Praise God. Where will you spend your eternity? We have to continually striving and pushing towards the race or walking towards the crown that we want God, Jesus Christ wants to put on us. He loves us. That is why he's giving, he, 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 I mean, he's prepared to give that crown to anyone that obey him. Amen. Matthew chapter. Uh, sorry, Mark chapter 9, verse 43. Mark 9, verse 43. He said, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into the, sorry, into the life made it than having two hands and go to hell into the fire that never shall be quenched is unquestionable. Jesus Christ said, 
it is if our hand will be does not mean that this your hand what is jesus is trying to tell us is that if anything that is in us any sin that we are seeing whatever habits that we have any character that we that we that we possess whatever manipulation that we are doing if that will make us not to go to heaven he said we should cut that thing off we should deliver ourselves from it lying fornication adultery praise god disobedience bearing false witness jesus christ said if that will make us not to enter heaven not to reign with him in heaven he said we should stop it praise god if our hand will make us not to enter the kingdom of god he said we should cut it off what is that thing that will deprive you from reigning with christ in heaven i will also ask myself the same thing what is that thing that will make me not to reign with christ in heaven is it when i'm a puppet i try to paint the 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 message that will be suitable to me or for me to say it according to the way god want me to say it ezekiel 37 verse 8 and 9 said Ezekiel did it according to the way he was commanded. That is how I supposed to say it to you. He said, "If your hand, if the hand offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter heaven with one hand than for you to go with. I mean, for you to have two hands and go to hell fire." Hallelujah. We will not go to hell fire in Jesus name. It's not made for us. It's not made for you. It's not made for your household. I wish everybody in the whole world today can just embrace Christ and see how glorious that very beautiful day will, will be. As the earth contain all of us, my brothers and my sisters, that place is even mightier than the earth that we are now. The world that we are now we are thinking it is suitable that place if the whole world today every everyone in the world also embrace christ and that very day devil will be in very serious confusion because there is no one that will go to his uh, side but somehow it is unfortunate that uh, people are still very adamant to listen and to understand how this very race is some people are telling you oh there is nothing like that even some denomination they are telling you oh everything is here in the world my brother and my sister it is not so if it was so lazarus and the rich man the rich man should have complained that where he is he is being tormented he say he is languishing in in a very serious pain so that abraham should send lazarus to come and drop water in his mouth if that will stop it no that will not stop it now we have myself and yourself we have the time to change our ways we have the time to amend everything it's like when somebody want to die he will first of all write a will and reach his house properly god told uh, god told ezekiah he say arrange your house that so so thing is going to happen next ezekiah was ezekiah said oh my lord why how would this happen look at what i have done in your house how will why will you take my life this time 
Because God is the God that owns our life. He can take it anytime he wants. Praise God. He can take it because we are not the owner of our life. My brothers and my sisters, where will you spend eternity? Hallelujah. Let me read verse, uh, read it up to verse 45. He said, verse 44, where, where there, I mean, sorry, where there warm diet not, and the fire is not quenched. Verse 45, and if thy food offend, offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter hot into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Praise God. If we read it down to even 50, it will. I mean, 49, you will see everything there. Praise God. If anything is there to deprive us, to prevent us, to stop us, he said we should stop doing it right from now. Jesus Christ give us this word in order for myself and yourself to repent for whatever sins that we are committing. The book of Romans says, Shall we continue in sin because grace is abound? No. On that very great day, even if we are crying, we cannot, the cry cannot do anything again. We all see what is happening in the world today. The death can come anytime. The death can come anytime and anything can happen anytime. There will be no more adjustment once it happens. Hallelujah. The utter darkness, weeping, and gnashing of teeth. Let us go to Luke chapter 13, verse 28. Luke 13, verse 28. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And you yourself trust out. We will not be thrown out in Jesus' name. He said there shall be, I mean, there shall be a very great confusion in the life of people then. Though you cannot change, you cannot amend. It's like when a child, a, a, if a child or a child or somebody that is in the college or university or whatever uh, educational uh, level you are, when you do exam, they may say, okay, repeat again. Retake that exam. Maybe the next one you will pass it. Praise God. So, like this very situation, there is no way like that. Jesus will not give us another chance to say, Oh, okay, you come back to life again. Come and do what you so that you can correct your ways. There are some people that said those type of things happen to them. But on that last day, because it was not yet time, it was that very thing that happened to people was for them to amend or complete their assignment and also to give warning to those that are still in the world, that are still alive. Somebody can sleep for 24 hours, can sleep for 72 hours later when he wake up. People can even say, oh, this person has died. Praise God. But if it is not the will of God for that person to pass on that very 
time, that very day, God will bring that person back to life. I listened to one preacher more than, say, about more than 10 years ago. It's possible that the preacher may still be in UK. He said when he was coming from America to, to UK, he went for a program there. As he was just dozing off, he just saw that two people was with him, an angel of the Lord. They were just taking him through a, a, a tunnel. He was just going. Himself, before, as he was going, he was just pleading to the angel and letting them know that it is not yet time for him. Some people that are hearing me now, if they have seen, I mean, they have uh, heard that preacher before giving this testimony, they will remember whom I am talking of. He said, as he was just going, every, he was pleading. He just coming from America. He was pleading to them, pleading to the angel, please, it is not yet time. I haven't finished my assignment. I haven't done this. I haven't done this. No, nobody know about what is happening. He said he pleaded within his spirit. That is more reason why we also have to feed our spirit man. So that in any situation, he can act. Praise God. So after everything, before the plane landed in the UK. He said he, he saw himself come back to himself. The spirit in him has already left. It, whosoever that was sitting by him that day, that sat by him, was just seeing an empty vessel. It's like a can coke that is empty or a water bottle that is empty. The spirit was no more there. That is how we are, my brothers and my sisters. So he said, before the flight landed, he came back to himself. And that very period, that very day, he started weeping. When he landed, he went to his house. He was weeping. There was something in the life of that man that time. I'm not going to mention the name. I know the man very well. There was something that God wanted him to drop. But later, that thing led him to prison. I thank God now that maybe it's possible by now he might have repented fully. This is for myself and yourself to take correction. I'm not just saying it because I want to say it. Praise God. God is giving us warning every day, every minute that what is going to happen on that last day? He doesn't want us to suffer. Because the Bible also makes us to understand that, that he doesn't want any soul to perish. Praise God. So he doesn't want any soul to perish. That is why he's warning us every day. Hallelujah. So let us also go to... He said, um, the resurrection of judgment. Let's go to Mount, sorry, John chapter 5, verse 29. John 5, 29. John 5, 29 says, um, I shall come forth, they that have gone, sorry, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of that, uh, damnation. Can see the good and the bad the sheep and the goat, they will be separated. The tears and the weed, they will be separated. That is why God told us that uh, we should allow both to grow together. There is, a, there is an end to everything. 
at the time of harvest, there will be some kind of separation between these two group of people. As you are hearing him, hearing me now, my brother and my sister, and also myself that is speaking, God is telling us, Jesus is warning us. He said, and they and and shall comfort. Let me read from verse 28. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Hallelujah. That is how the judgment day is going to. Like my father, my mother, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, everyone that have died before. All my generations that have died, they will hear his voice that day. Oh my God. So also the whole world, in the whole world, everyone that, that have died, they will all hear his voice, even though that are dying now. On that very last day, everyone will hear his voice. Then verse 29, he said, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. We will not be destroyed, we will not be cast out, or we will not be cast into hellfire in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Our God is good. He said, be sentenced to her. Let us see Matthew 23, verse 33. Say some people will be sentenced to her. Jesus Christ, help us. Matthew 23, verse 33. Twenty-three, thirty-three says, uh, "Ye, um, ye serpent, ye generation of viper, how can ye escape the damnation of hell?" The serpent, God is, Jesus Christ is talking about here. It's not the snake. It's talking of those disobedient children. Praise God. So you are not going to give excuse that they owe, like Adam and Eve. Is the wife that you gave to me, or because the serpent, the snake, have come to trick me? No, it's not like that again. That very day we pass. There is no excuse for anybody, and say, oh, because I, the evangelist did not call me, or because. Uh, I was taking care of my children, or taking care of my wife, or taking care of my husband, or pursuing my career. That is why I was not having the chance to serve you. That day is not like that. Hallelujah. I'll read that place again, then I will read 34. He said, yes, serpent, and ye generation of viper, how can ye es escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, being, wherefore, behold, I send, I send unto you prophet and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye sponge, I mean scorch, in your synagogue, and persecute, and persecute them from city to city. Some of the good pastors, some of the good prophets, some of the good Christians in the world today, some are being persecuted. 
some are being killed. We see in Africa, like in China, thank God here that uh, the, the persec dif in, di in different nations, there's different persecutions. During the time of uh, ISIS, when they were killing the Christians, they were beheading them. They can even film them for you to see, cut their head off. They put some on the grave, I mean, just by the grave like this, they lay them on the floor, just cut their head. So Jesus Christ is telling us that such a thing has happened, even in churches today. He said, there are also persecution in synagogues, synagogue. From city to city, people are doing it. Apostle Paul, thank God that he repented or God arrested him. Apostle Paul was one of them before. There are many people like us today that are still doing something like that, like Apostle Paul. But Jesus is telling us we should stop all these things and hear his voice. Because he's our great commander. He knows everything. He knows how it's going to happen. He, 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 he gave us that love which we ourselves cannot even give to our children. Praise God. He gave us that love for us not to be destroyed. He came to die for us and said, Father, don't allow, don't do this thing to these children again. You are the one that created them. Let him come down to come and die and warn them before he came, before he died. He first of all give us some teachings. That is some of the things that we are reading now. That no man should be destroyed. No man should go to hellfire. Jesus doesn't want anybody to go to hellfire. Hallelujah. So on that day, there is no way of escape. My brothers and my sisters, where will you spend eternity? Amen. Let us also read Luke chapter 12, verse 47. Luke 12, 47. Forty-seven says he said, and that, sorry, and that servant, which knew it, his lord, is lost. We and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Hallelujah those that did not prepare themselves. He said they shall be beaten with many stripes, with cane, with everything, punishment. If our children disobey, or disobey us at home, like the way I was sometimes when I was small, before the age of 15, when my mom asked me to do something that time, I refused. My mom will not disturb me during the day. I've said it once before, it will not disturb me. Even if my, my sister or my siblings are hearing me now, they will say that, they know that I'm saying the truth. By any time from 12 o'clock in the night when you will be sleeping and snoring, that's when my mom will wake you up and say, it is time, come and see your result. It will whip me very seriously. I cannot run to anywhere, the place is dark. So Jesus Christ is telling us here, that verse 47, where is it? Twelve forty-seven. He said that, and that servant which knew his loss will, I mean will, and prepared not himself, Neither did, neither did according to his will shall be 
beaten with many stripes, with many came, punishment. And that came will not stop. Bah, 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 bah. It will not stop. If you know what is Christ, I mean, Jesus tried to explain to us here. If you know, as you have heard the word, you are not obeying it. As you have heard, you have seen the commandment. You are not following it up. Praise God. He said, on that very day, that very person, that very servant, that very man of God, that very woman of God, that very Christian or unbeliever, because the judgment is going to start from the congregation, from the top. He said that person will be beaten. Don't be concerned with people that you have seen in life today that are just jolly, 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 enjoying themselves. Or even in the churches today, whether you give tight or you did not give tight, don't look at what the man or the woman of God is doing with the money. God's punishment is coming for every soul. Because if they, he said, if they did not do the will of the master, what is going to happen? The master will punish them. If they did not use that money or preach the right word to people, the word of repentance to people, and be preaching prosperity, prosperity, he said, they, this type of people will be beaten because they did not do the will of the master. Hallelujah. Let us also read the um, Just a minute, please. That is how it's going to be that day. That anyone that refused to hear the word of God, that is what is going to happen to everybody. I pray for myself and yourself not to end up in hellfire in Jesus' name. For God to give us the strength to overcome every situation, to overcome every pain, to overcome every struggle. We think we are struggling now. Praise God. Lazarus was thinking like that too, as we are also thinking now. He was suffering, no food to eat. But at the last day, he was the one enjoying. Let us read Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. Matthew 10, verse 6. Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. He said, but go rather to the to the lost, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is why Jesus Christ came. Let me read it from verse 5. He said, These 12, these 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go, go not into the way of the Gentiles. My brothers and my sisters, God is telling me and you today because he have already retrieved us from darkness. He said, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samar Samaritan. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse seven, as ye, as ye go, and as ye go, preach, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My brothers and my sisters, we may be saying like some far back 1970 something. When I was growing up, I started hearing like uh, some other denomination say the world is coming to an end very soon. The world is coming to an end very soon. And even up to today, we are still hearing that word. But somewhere around about 
five, I mean, sorry, more than five years ago, up to about eight to 10 years ago, we were in a congregation or we were trying to do a program. Somebody was asking, when will Jesus, be, that herself has also been hearing that word. Jesus is coming very soon. The kingdom of God is at hand. So when will it really be? He had been hearing it since when he was a, a teenager. It just clicked to me that by the time myself and yourself, if I drop dead right now, first of all, my Jesus has come. On the way that, that is not, I'm not talking about the trumpet. That is on the way that I cannot repent again. I cannot change again. It's, the Bible said in Hebrew 9.27, we say, after this judgment, it is appointed unto men wants to die after this judgment. Praise God. There is no more way for me to repent. God is giving me enough time now to drop everything that will make me not to reign with him that day. So also I am urging you, my brothers and my sisters. Apostle Paul said, I beseech you. I'm telling each and every one of us now, even in my home, everywhere, and this, this message is going to enter YouTube for people that can see it, to listen to it and hear it. Jesus Christ said, there are prophets, there are uh, pastors, there are people that have been preaching or saying this kind of a thing. Even in the synagogue, some people punish them, they beat them up, they neglect them, they ignore them. Our should not be like that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So our last verse uh, is going to be Jesus paid our penalty. That is the Second Corinthians 5. Just a minute. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Reverend, if you see it, can you read for us, please? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21. Jesus paid everything for us. Bible is a new Bible, so it's a this ticket. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21. For he meant him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that he might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. Yes, that is. Can you read from 20, from 20? Now then, we are ambassador for Christ. As though God were pleading to us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So also I am telling or speaking to everyone that is under the sound of my voice now for us to listen. That verse 21 says, For he for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him Jesus Christ came to pay the price for myself and for yourself he paid the price for the house I mean for the whole world when we are celebrating the death of Christ or the birth of Christ or the resurrection of Christ we should also remember that this he did not Christ did not do it because he want I mean because he just I mean because of pride or anything he did it for me and for yourself to be saved he did it for me and yourself not to end up in hellfire 
that we should recognize this very painful death that our Jesus Christ went through. Hallelujah. That we shouldn't just throw it off like that. It shouldn't, it should be a celebration, but it should be a celebration with reckoning. We should recognize it. We should appreciate it. We should thank him for it. And in doing so, we should follow his, his ways. Because he himself came to reconcile us to God. We shouldn't miss that opportunity. We shouldn't let that opportunity that he gave to us to be wasted. Praise God. When somebody gives you a, a, a chance to do anything, you try to strive towards it so that that person will not be disappointed. Jesus Christ is, I mean, pleaded to us. Make us to understand that without him, there is nothing in life. If you have mansions, that mansions are not taking you to anywhere. When you die, you are not going to, they are not going to, they are not going to bury that mansion with you. Even if you have one, uh, one flat, three bedroom flat, you cannot sleep in two rooms one day. When that kind of a thing happen in a place where I am, like in United Kingdom, they can even say, oh, that person have dementia or mental health. They will call the doctors to come and examine that type of a man or a woman. Praise God. But now we have seen what Jesus Christ has done. We have to embrace it. And we shouldn't let that disappointment come. If we disappoint him, that is when he will now cast people of dis disobedient. People that disappointed him, he will now cast them to hellfire and say, he warned you enough that what is coming on that very last day, if you want to wait for it, or if you want to enjoy it, you have to follow his footsteps. My brothers and my sisters, where will you spend eternity? This is the last series of it, the part three. God has given us Enough, enough money concerning his kingdom. We shouldn't let us, I mean, slip off from our hand. We shouldn't let what we are seeing in the world take the, the enjoyment of that last day from us. Praise God. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. My brothers and my sisters, let us pray some few minutes prayer for God to continually making us to be strong in him. We are going to pray first of all to thank God. Thank Jesus for coming down to the world to come and die for me and for you so that I might be saved. For coming down to reconcile us to, cry, to God, the Father. And when after he died, he also sent a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, to us, to guide and protect us, to remind us of everything. Let us now continue to thank him. Father Jesus, I thank you, Father, today, O Lord. I bless your holy Lord Jesus for everything that you have done for us, everything that you have done for the whole world, for the death that you died for me, O Lord. Jesus, so that I will not die again so that I will be able to resurrect with you. I thank you even for the laws that you put in place, O oh Lord. I thank you for the grace that you have given me, O oh Lord. I thank you as I also speak this word today, O oh Lord. Let me be a partaker of the benefit, Lord. Let me also be Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Don't let me be the, 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 the hearer, don't let us be the hearer and not the doer. The book of James said we should be the 
the hearer and also the doer of the word of God. That is, we should follow everything that we have heard or learned. Father, as I'm also speaking, as I have also spoken this word, oh Lord, the spirit to continually stay with you, to obey you fully. My brothers and my sister, pray for that spirit to be upon you. As you have heard it today, pray that God should sustain you. He should keep you alive. He should make you to be strong in him. Continue to pray that prayer right now. My Lord, my God, Father, Lord Jesus, I need your strength. I need your power to carry on, oh Lord, because I cannot do it without you. The roads are dark. The roads are slippery. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, uphold us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to reign with you in heaven, oh Lord. Father, the power to strive on, the power to continue this praise. Father, Lord, give it to each and every one of us. As many as those that are hearing me right now. Father, Lord, speak to them. Touch their heart, O oh Lord. Let us also pray for those that haven't believed or accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. My Lord, my God, Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, I commit such ones, O oh Lord, into your able hand right now. Touch their heart, O oh Lord. Bring them back to yourself. And embrace them, O oh Lord, Father, Lord. Bring them back like the prodigal son once again. Touch them, O oh Lord, wherever they may be, whosoever they may be, O oh Lord. Father, touch their life right now. Bring them back in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are also going to pray that we shouldn't let the things of the world deprive us from following or obeying Christ. Continue to pray right now. My Lord, my God, Father, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, don't let the things of this world. If devil, Satan can tempt Jesus, your master, your creator, your general, your God, the devil can also tempt us. He has tempted many people and they slip away from the way of Christ. Eventually, some have died in it. Father Lord, don't let the things of the world take me out from your hand. Continue to pray, my brother, my sister. Oh, Lord God, Father, Lord, Holy Spirit. Don't let the things of this world take me out from your hand, oh, Lord. I want to reign with you, Father. My household, our children, Lord, my wife, myself, oh, Lord, we want to reign with you. Brothers and sisters that are hearing me now, they, they want to, they, they are hearing us, oh, Lord, so that they want, I mean, so that they can reign with you, Lord, so that all of us can repent. Lord Jesus, uphold us, O oh Lord. Take total control. Possess us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, Father. We worship you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are also going to pray and say, Lord, make a way for us where there seems to be no way. In this very month of May 2021, Father, make a way for us today. In the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord God, Father, Lord, Holy Spirit. We ask for your divine power, O oh Lord. We ask for your strength. Make a way, Father, where there seems to be no way. In the mighty name of Jesus. In this very month of May, May O oh Lord, every crooked way, make it to be straight for us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, make a way. Those things that the enemy has said, it is not possible in our life. Father, make a way for us, Lord. Let those things possible. They are not our creator, Jesus. You are our creator. You are the God that created us, O oh Lord. Make a way for us. We had there seems to be no way in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, make the impossible things to be possible in our life. Whatever we are looking for, those things that will make us to run out from you, Father, Lord, make a way for us. We had there seems to be no way. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are also going to pray and say, in time of storm, Father, Lord God, Holy Spirit, we invite you. Pray right now and say, Lord, any storm, any trouble that I'm experiencing or you are experiencing, let us invite Jesus to take total control of it. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord, my God, we invite you into every storm that we are passing through, oh Lord, whatever trouble that man or that woman 
is passing through. Jesus, we invite you right now. Take total control of death in the name of Jesus. Come, let your light shine into our problems in the mighty name of Jesus. Come into any storm that I am passing through, O oh Lord. The storm of marriage, the storm our children are passing through, the storm of the whole world, the storm in gospel, O oh Lord. Father, Lord God, we hand it over to you. We surrender everything to you this hour, Lord. Take total control in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't let this storm take us away, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer right now, that God should come into the storm of your life. That is the problem that is, you are facing, that God should solve everything for you. Hand it over to him. I don't know who is going to be caught within this week. Pray that God should be your judge in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone going to court, oh Lord, Father, within this week, within this month, Father Lord Jesus, be the advocate, be the judge for that very person, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, be the solicitor, be the antony for that very man or that very woman in the mighty name of Jesus. Take total control of that very case, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, Father, because you have done it. In Jesus' name, let us now pray for the whole world that God should set his fire of revival in the whole world. Lord Jesus, Father, set your fire of revival in the whole world, Lord, so that people will hear your word and remember what you have said, O oh Lord, so that people will hear your word and remember the price that you paid. Father, set your fire of revival upon every nation right now upon the whole world, O oh Lord. Father, set your fire of revival upon my family, upon every soul in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, let your fire of revival continue to burn in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us pray for this month that we have entered right now and say, Lord Jesus, in this very month of May, May 2021, I will not bury any soul. I will not die prematurely. Let us now continue to pray. My Lord God, Father, Lord God, in this month, O oh Lord, this month of May, Jesus, I will not bury any soul, O oh Lord. My Lord, my God, Jesus, I will not die prematurely this month, O oh Lord. I will not die accidental death. Pray that prayer for yourself. Sudden death will not take you away, will not take me away in the mighty name of Jesus. That sudden death will not take our children away. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord, my God, Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, take total control, O Lord. We will not die prematurely. Father, Holy Spirit, I pray right now that sudden death, that premature death, that spirit of sudden death that is roaming about in the whole world right now. Father, we put an end to it today in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord God, take control, Jesus. Father, we put an end to that death right now. Pray for the whole world that this pandemic should go. We don't know as a human being, I don't know how it's going to go, but God knows everything. Let us commit ourselves into the hands of God right now. Say, Lord Jesus, take this pandemic away, this coronavirus, take it away, oh Lord. We have heard enough, we have seen enough of death. Father Lord, put an end to it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal everyone that is sick, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Jesus, heal everyone, O oh Lord, that are sick right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us now continue to soak ourselves in the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, I soak myself in your blood. I swim in the pool of your blood in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, for everyone right now, and I soak them in the blood of Jesus. I soak my house. I soak this auditorium. I soak this, this, uh, all our gadgets our studio, I stoke it in the blood of Jesus. Every attack, Lord, we bind it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel every attack. Every bad dream, we cancel it right now. Rumor of, rumors of war, we put an end to it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, have your way. Quickly, let us pray and say, Lord Jesus, provide everything we need for us this month from today, O oh Lord. Let us never be in lack in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, supply all that we need, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
O Lord God, take control. Jesus, supply all that we need, O Lord, according to your riches in glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, supply all that we need. In the mighty name of Jesus. We will not suffer any lack, O Lord. Accident will not take us away. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. I soak everyone in the blood of Jesus. Father, let your divine protection, wherever you are, my brother, my sisters, the divine protection of God will continually be upon you. Whether you are in Canada, you are in America, you are in Australia, you are in Europe, you are in Africa, you are in China, God will continually protect you, protecting each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. The power to do it right, God will put it in you this month from today in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will bless every one of us. We thank you, Father. This studio, O oh Lord, we hand it over to you. Our auditorium, O oh Lord, Father, Lord God, Holy Spirit, we hand it over to you, O oh Lord. Dwell in this temple, O oh Lord, and let every word that come out from this temple deliver every soul. Let every word that come out from this altar, O oh Lord, set people free. Let every word, O oh Lord, that come out from this altar, Jesus, destroy every hurdles, break every yoke that the enemy has set in the life of people. In the mighty name of Jesus, anyone that hear, heard, that hear our voice, O oh Lord, that hear our preaching or teaching, Father, let them be healed from every sicknesses in the name of Jesus. I speak life into the life of that woman or that man that I will sick bed right now in the name of Jesus. Let your word deliver each and every one. I thank you, Father, because you have done it. Father, I surrender my life before you today, O Lord. As the oracle of your word, Father, I continue to protect me and my household in the name of Jesus. Whatever arrow the enemy wants to send, Jesus, by your power, I know that I, we are already in you. Jesus, let your divine protection never depart from us, O Lord. Father, don't let us meet, miss the edge in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the crown of life that you have given us, for that opportunity that you have given us, for that grace that you have given to each and every one of us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness, and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord God forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord will continually be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>